Hello and welcome back to the Airsoft Boneyard and FPS channel. Today we're going to look at the effect of three different springs at three different hop-up settings for each spring across two different BB weights, a 0.2 gram and a 0.45 gram BB. Look at those effects on FPS, energy, and sound. We're going to leave the TAC-41 for this test almost entirely stock. So that means stock spring guide. I'm going to take the spacer off of there. We're not going to use the spacer. We'll start with the rifle being back to complete stock, so 75 Newton silver back spring. And the stock piston with the stock piston head. Cylinder head also stock. In addition to the stock spring, we're also going to test a Rapax 2.8 joule spring. I have a two joule spring on order as well. When that gets here, we'll add that onto this video. And we're also gonna test this Silverback 150 Newton spring. So kind of spanning from a very weak spring to a very strong spring. All of the other internals of this TAC-41 are still stock. We currently have the hop up set at zero. We'll test at zero, five, and 10, or 9.9 .9 essentially. This has 50 different settings, so that's roughly zero, halfway, full. Later on, we will test uh, the stalker hop-up unit, the Kraken, for now we're going to leave that stock. Stock barrel, everything else in here is stock. We currently have 0.2 gram BBs inside this rifle. Alright, so here's our setup for testing the TAG-41. We've got a sound meter about a foot away from us, right underneath where the rifle is going to be between us and the chronograph. You can see the sound is going to change with my voice. It's going to be a good bit louder whenever the, the shot goes off. We have the sound meter set to record the max that it sees for each shot. Chronograph is currently set to 0.2 gram BBs, which is what we're starting with. Hop ups on zero, 75 Newton silverback spring, fully stocked TAC 41. Three sixty eight point nine, one oh two decibel. In this first graph, we're going to see the three different springs on the left axis, starting with the weakest spring on the bottom and the strongest spring on the top. From the factory, the TAC-41 is supposed to shoot around 400 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs, and from our results, you can see we're actually pretty close. Uh, with the hop-up right in the middle, we did get a little over 400 and a little bit under when the hop-up was zero. It appears with the hop up at 9, there's a little bit too much hop up and we actually lost some FPS. The Rapax 2.8 joule spring had higher feet per second than the Silverback 75 Newton. It's not terribly surprising. The one really nice thing about the Rapax spring, even though it is shooting faster, it is not much harder to pull back than the 75 Newton spring. As expected, the strongest spring did have the highest FPS. So if your target is to get to about 550 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs with as little modification as possible, you could just drop 150 Newton silverback spring into the TAC-41 and you'd be good to go with everything else stock. This spring is quite difficult to pull back though and playing with this for an extended period of time could wear out your arm. In addition to looking at the averages, we also want to look at the standard deviations. We don't want much shot to shot variation, so we want the standard deviations on feet per second to be low, ideally less than one. And in this case, with a stock configuration, we didn't really get there. Uh, the Raypack spring was pretty constant at about four. The 150 Newton spring was mostly around four, except for the hop up at zero, which you probably won't really use with that spring. And the Silverback 75 Newton kind of went all over the place, but a really nice result right in the middle at a hop up of five. Keep in mind, there's no mods on this replica. There's no Teflon tape mod or anything else like that that would improve air seal and reduce standard deviation. So for a stock replica, this is pretty good. Looking at the same results that we just saw, but this time on the heavier 0.45 gram BB, you can see our feet per second of course dropped for all three springs as expected 
Our standard deviations also drop though, which is good to see. Part of this could be the heavier BB weight, could also just be that they're higher quality BBs. Now, converting those feet per seconds to energy, for those of you who are interested in what the energy output is, the 150 Newton spring is hovering right about that 2.8 joule mark, which is what we expect, because 550 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs is 2.8 joules. If you've heard that the TAC 41 has joule creep, this graph is showing that. So if we move over to the right, 0.45 gram BB, we are well over 2.8 joules. We are almost a half joule over for two of these hop-up settings. And we see that pattern replicated on the Raypack spring and to a lesser extent on the 75 Newton stock spring. Now let's take a look at the effect of each of those springs on the output sound of the TAC 41. If you're playing as a sniper, you likely want to be as quiet as possible with each shot so you're not detectable. Unfortunately, the stock TAC-41 is not the quietest replica. It is louder when it's at zero hop-up and the most quiet when it's near its max hop-up, but there is not mu that much of a spread between those numbers. In this case, you can see all three springs were about the same volume, or the same sound intensity. The 150 Newton spring and the Raypack spring were slightly louder than the stock 75 Newton spring, but not by much. While there's not a lot of difference in these numbers, we will see bigger differences later on when we start testing the advanced piston head from Silverback with different air brakes, the Scorpion piston with air brakes, different aspects of the Scorpion system. One thing to keep in mind with decibels is they are a little bit tricky. If there is a 10 decibel difference, that actually means it's a two times higher perceived volume if it's 10 more decibels. If it's 10 less decibels, it actually means it's two times lower perceived volume. So what you hear would actually be about half the volume. So while these numbers are not great, they're a bit loud, later on we'll see that we can drop these quite a bit with some different upgrades as we continue our quest towards trying to find the quietest, easiest to pull, uh, most repeatable TAC 41 that we can within our field regulations. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, please leave them below. The next video is going to look at the effect of the advanced piston head from Silverback and his three different air brakes with these three springs once again.